We greet you in peace, son. Christmas is strange and full of weird old customs, such as a fat old man coming down your chimney and emptying his sack into your bedroom. But one of the weirdest is an old British custom, particularly in Ireland and Wales, called hunting the wren. One of Britain's smallest birds was hunted on St. Stephen's Day, the 26th of December, through the woods and moors, and when caught by the hunting party, crucified on a long decorated pole by a team of men and boys called the Straw Boys. They would then visit houses parading the crucified wren and begging for money for the funeral of the bird, thought to be a Celtic custom, and the wren was magical to the druids. The custom still goes on, but the bird is now protected and doesn't get murdered. What is this? Of all Europe's Yuletide customs, this one is visually amongst the most disturbing and unusual. The Mary Louis is so unruly it needs a handler. The ancient custom comes exclusively from the small mining villages of South Wales, but its origins are shrouded and may stretch back into ancient times. The effigy is comprised of a dead horse's skull and often decorated with garlands and charms, thought to be related to the hobby horse. My theory is this begging ritual was probably invented by hard up coal miners, using the remains of dead pit ponies to supplement poor wages to buy beer at the pub. They would go house to house asking for money, food and drink, or it may be mystical and harken back to an ancient Celtic horse cult. You decide. In Northern Europe, when the winter festival commonly known as Christmas is underway, the unearthly demons emerge from the night, terrifying little children across the continent. One such nightmare, Frau Perkte, would visit each household hideous and bent, a shape-shifting crone with the feet of a goose and a taste for children's entrails. If you had been good, done your chores, and spun all your yarn, you were safe, but the lazy children would be in for a treat. Frau Perkte would split open their bellies, taking the entrails, replacing them with twigs, straw and rocks. Happy Christmas, kids. Pork bellies. I knew it. I knew it. Wassail. Yuletide, midwinter, a time of darkness and bone-chilling cold across the northern hemisphere. As the sun dies, our ancestors would go to the enormous lengths to keep the spirits of death away from the village. Rituals in the Balkans, such as the Busajora in Hungary, Capra in Romania, and Serve in Bulgaria. Armies of men would dance and perform folk plays recounting the death and resurrection of the sun deity. Hellish masks, fur and bells worn to frighten away the spirit of death. They do it to this day. Some of the costumes and masks pass down through families over centuries. Long may it continue. If they cease, the sun may never come up again. Wassail. He was a man who loved Christmas almost as much as he loved money. He thought that he would combine these two loves with a third, goats. Stig Gervler, an advertising executive living in the Swedish town of Gervle, thought it would increase Christmas trade but started a war that's been raging since 1966. His idea to erect a 12 metre straw goat effigy for the town square, based on the Yule goat, an ancient Scandi symbol of Christmas. In a twist of irony, he got his brother, the fire chief of Gervle, Jürgen, to build the effigy. On the day it was completed, you guessed it, it burnt down. In the 57 years since, it has been burnt down and destroyed 38 times. Some years they even built two, only to have both destroyed. Stig forgot to factor in one thing. 
pagans. And there is only one thing pagans like more than an effigy, and that's burning an effigy. Oh God! Oh Jesus Christ! Eggnog. I think I'm gonna have to get eggnog. I don't understand the words you just said. You're insane.